and never fails to, 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 catch, to capture the whole congregation's notice with the enthusiasm of his prayer. He groaned and sighed and threw himself about and humbly kissed the ground time and time again. And when I was through, he'd hurry on ahead to the door and hand me the holy water. His servant, who was like his mirror image, told me of it, his poverty. I'd give him money. Every strength as ever, he always tried to give some back, saying too much. I don't deserve half this much. What makes you think I want your pay? And when I refused, he'd go and share it with the poor in front of me. Finally, I was inspired to bring him here, in which all of us have, have seemed to have flourished. He disapproves of everything, of course. He keeps very close watch on my life. And just to protect my honor, gives me all the names of the people who make eyes at him. He's far more jealous than I ever was. You never know the fervor of this man. He sees the slightest thing in his head and scandalizes but what we hardly notice. Recently, he was full of self-reproach for having caught a flea while praying and killing it with excessive savagery. What is this? Are you making fun of me? You must be mad. You think this bad of mine? Now what you're saying smacks of atheism. You're tainted with it. And I'm not told you once, I've told you 50 times. That's the best way to get yourself into some quite serious trouble. I know, that's what people always say. You want to stay as blind as you are. Good eyes are the sign of atheism. Anyone who can wish idols has no respect, no religious faith. God sends into my heart, and I know what I mean. They can choose you, can't make a distinction between your heart and your body. Men are peculiar creatures, most of them. They never seem to get the happy meeting. The reason's too limited. They first is found, and often this was ad admirable, showing the sheer exaggeration and excess. I only thought I'd mention the fact. I see. You're a most distinguished chief. Repository of universal knowledge. Uniquely wise is uniquely good. A jingle, an oracle of your time, compared to the rest of us a fool. No, I'm not a most distinguished chief. Repository of universal knowledge. There is one thing I need to know how to do, and that's the only difference between true and false. There's nothing I approve of more than genuinely religious men. Nothing nobler, more flippant in the world than the enthusiasm of true belief. Equally, there's no one worse than those downright imposters, those worshippers in public, who deceive exactly this hand, go and punish, while they prefer to make a mockery of everything human beings hold most sacred. Those career mystics, business, mis business has been on their knees, trying to knock the credit for Steve by screwing up their eyes and throwing fits. Those are normally zealous for many, chasing their fortune by the road to heaven to make demands from each heart in prayer and make sure they're well installed before they bring the job in the world. For it is loyal, complete, vindictive, cunning, and when the time comes, destroy him and pray to his guys with fierce resentment to gain a cover of what's good for heaven. This faith is becoming far too common. Our attachments, very often, glorious examples of true piety, easily recognizable as such. Frankly, your man is quite another species. I'm sure you sing his praise in good faith, but I'm just believe you're blinded by mere show. Is that all? Yes. Then perhaps you would excuse me. Oh, just one minute, please. I'll change the subject. You promised to play, you understand? That's right. And you didn't even give him a date. Correct. Then why have you postponed the wedding? I don't know. Have you perhaps changed your mind? Possibly. How are you going to break your word? I didn't say it. I just can't imagine to prevent you from honoring your promise. Deacon, what is all this to pay to you? Blair has asked me to ask you about it. That was nice of you. That wasn't. Well, what am I to tell him? Tell him what you want. But to do that after what you have in mind. What are your plans? To do God's will. Be serious, boys. Blair has had your promise. Will you keep it? Goodbye. I feel the worst for this engagement. I must be warning of what's going on. Your heart, 
And it makes you very happy if I agree to let him marry you. Hmm? Mm -hmm. What is it? Sorry. What? I don't think I caught what you said. What do you mean? Who is it that you wanted me to say had reached my heart? It would have made me very happy if you agreed to let him marry who? Mm, touch you. Well, look, you wouldn't. Not at all. Why should you want to make me tell a lie? What I want is more to be the truth. That is my wish. What more do you mean? You mean you want? Yes. I'm going to make her truth a member of the family. And since I have the power to insist, <laughs> why don't you do it? Each not me again, suffering from chronic curiosity. I heard someone mentioning this marriage, and I heard any sign of this rumor was so based of fact, or carrying fiction. The one that obviously was it was nonsense. You find it unbelievable? So much so, I wouldn't believe it even if you told me. I think I know a way to make you, though. I know, you're telling us a fairy story. I'm telling you exactly what will happen. Rubbish! Let us not waste our time on this nonsense, dear. Get on with you. Your father doesn't mean it. He's joking. Will you listen? No. No good. We don't believe you. I'm starting to get annoyed. All right, then. We do believe you. In which case, shame on you. You look quite normal with that big beard in the middle of your face, and yet you mean your mouth up. Listen. You've taken certain liberties here today, which I don't like one bit. I warn you! Let's try and keep our tempers, shall we, sir? I still think this marriage is some elaborate joke. Your daughter should cut out for a bigot, and besides, he should have other things on his mind. And what possible advantage can this marriage bring you? And why choose a beggar for a son-in-law? With all your money? That's enough! If he has nothing, all the more reason to admire him. His poverty is an honest poverty. He lives in higher than the grave. And his pure indifference to temporal things and his commitment to eternity. I intend to provide him with some means, free him from wants, and reacquire his lands. Property is highly thought of where he comes from. Even as he stands, it's obvious he's a gentleman. So he keeps saying. And that kind of pride doesn't quite fit with his religiousness. You wouldn't think a man who had chosen sainthood would need to boast about his name and race. The self evading rules of piety hardly accommodate rapid ambition. What is the purpose of this business? Ah, oh, this is upsetting you? Let's leave his background and talk about his personality. Could you really, without the least remorse, and a girl like her to a man like him? Can't you foresee how such a marriage would turn out? Have you no sense of decency? If you force any girl to take a man against her will, you're gambling with her virtue. She may intend to lead a life of honor, but that depends on who you've chosen for her. And those whose ways are famously unfaithful have often been driven to that condition. And besides, it's quite hard to be faithful to certain husbands cast in certain molds. And any man who foolishly girls to take a man she can't stand is after only for God for whatever she may do. So think what danger you're punishing you, you with. Do I need her to teach me how to live? If you've got any things, you'll listen to me. Let us not waste our, our time on this nonsense, dear. It is true I promised you to believe. But he's been seen more than once playing cards. And I'm beginning to think that he's a free thinker. I haven't seen a lot of him in church. Why should he go exactly when you do? He's not like others that are just to be seen. I don't need your opinion. All I know is that heaven smiles on cartoons. And that's an asset second to none. This marriage will fulfill your wildest dreams. A series of sweet pleasures. You live together faithfully in love, like two children, like two turtle doves. You'll never quarrel, and you can find that you can turn him into anything that you would like. A couple, for example, which you lost your want to turn him into. That's enough. It's written all over him. It's in his stars. Not all your daughter's virtue could resist it. Will you stop interrupting me? Be quiet. I'm only Get your nose out of other people's business. I'm only trying to tell. Well, don't. It's only because he loves you. I don't want to be loved. No, I want to love you. Ha! See, your reputation is important to me. How can I let you lay yourself open to general ridicule? Shut up! How can I let you contract such a marriage in all conscience? Be quiet, Kate, before I... My blood boy, and I insist you hold your tongue. All right, I won't say another word, but you can't stop me speaking. Think all you like. Just concentrate on not speaking to me. All right, enough. 
in my system after mature consideration. But you're infuriating not to be allowed to speak. Although Tartuffe is not very pretty, he is off the side of Notre Dame. Even if you could find no sympathy for all his gifts. This is your lucky day, I'm telling you. No man would make me marry him against my will. First thing after the wedding, he'd find out. There's one way women can revenge themselves. I see you're ignoring what I said. What's the matter? I'm not talking to you. Then what are you doing? Talking to myself. I see. I've never heard of such insolence. She deserves a good smack. And here it comes. My dear, you must agree to my suggestion. The husband I have chosen for you is... Well, speak up! I have nothing else to say. Surely there's something. No, don't feel like it. But I've been waiting. You think I'm a fool? Anyway, I insist on your obedience and complete acceptance of my choice. I would be seen dead if that husband. <laughs> that girl's a pet. I cannot put up with her without surrendering to a sin for it. We can no longer go on with our discussion. Her insolence is going to be too offensive. I must get some air to calm me down with it. Oh, <laughs> 
stubborn. Do you want to kill me? Better we find some way to help. No, you be stubborn. It must go ahead now. Don't be 
so great. You give us a friendly look. Of course it's well known. Lovers are quite mad. Don't you think I have some grounds for complaint? You must admit it wasn't very nice to take such pleasure in upsetting me. Aren't you the most ungrateful man alive? Can we leave this discussion for a moment and concentrate on fitting up this wedding? Tell us what we should do. Try everything. Your father turns furious with this nonsense. But just in case he is, you should have to use it ravings with an impression of consent. So in case of emergency, it'd be easier to spin out of this game. The key thing in all this is play for time. You can develop a set of to cause the light. Or come across that almond. Dream some muddy water. A broken beer. And argue about the supper who's been dead. The main thing is, I can't marry you to him or tell anyone else until you say I do. Also, I'd say, to be on the safe side, it's best to not be seen together. So now, you get him to start to your first turkey, or to keep your promise to you. Let's get your stepmother on our side and ask your brother to keep trying. To tell the truth, whatever we may try, it's you I'm telling on. I can't ask for what my father wants, but I know I'll never be one to anyone but you. That's a great comfort, so it ever be. Lovers can't get enough of this letter. Now where you go? I just want to see. No, no more chat. Now you go this way, and you go that. Goodbye. like a miserable nothing if I don't think up some brilliant idea. And when I do, no power on earth will stop me. Oh, please, there's no need to exaggerate. It's just a suggestion of your father's. Not every resolution carried out. There's many a split. I must scotch this swine's plots. There's two words I must whisper in his ear. Calm down. Let your stepmother view of him as she's dealing with your father. She has some kind of influence on Tartu. She can say whatever he pleases, and she he's always indulgent. I have to do it's my mother. I hope to God he is. That will be fun. In fact, she sent it to me here on your behalf. To stand about Don Kim out about this marriage this morning you too much. And ask him how he feels about it. And explain the difficulties it will cause if he were to encourage the idea. His servant says I can't see him right now, he's praying. But he also said he'd be down here. Now will you please go and let me wait for him? Why shouldn't I just be there while they're talking? No, they must be alone. I wouldn't say a word to him. Oh, you're joking. We all know the short views you're on. That's just the way you go and spoil everything. Now go. No, I can watch without losing my temper. Oh, you're so annoying. Oh, here it comes. Oh, my hair is ripped off. Please put it away next to my bird. And I want you to pray for him eternal guidance. If there are any visitors, tell them I'll be for prison, distributing what few small coins I have. Hot for you, humbug. Yes, what do you want? To tell you. My goodness, before you say another word, take this. For what? Cover your breasts. I shouldn't have been exposed to them. That sort of thing does damage to the soul. It can give rise to a guilty thought. I didn't know you were so vulnerable to temptation. I didn't know flesh made such a big impression on your senses. I can't see why you should get so overheated. I mean, I'm not so easy to arouse. For instance, I could look at you stark naked and not be tempted by a single inch. If you're true for modesty, I'll be obliged to leave you. No, you won't. It's me who's going, so you can calm down. The only thing I have to say is this. The job is on your way. She'd like the work. By all means. Ah, that cheered him up. I think I must be right. Will she be long? I think that's her now. Yes, it is. I'll leave you to it. May God and all his infinite goodness grant a perpetual health in body and soul. And bless you. That's the humblest of this prayer. I'm very grateful for your kind wishes. Sit down. Let's make ourselves more comfortable. I hope you've quite recovered from your illness. Thank you. The fever didn't last. My prayers are scarcely worthy of perfecting grace from on high. But I must say their sole object has been your speedy upon the left. I really think you show too much desire for my welfare. Your help is very precious. To bring it back, I sacrifice my own. That's taking Christian charity to its limit. I uh, do appreciate your kindness. Really? I do far less to you than you deserve. I've been wanting to talk to you in private. I'm glad we're alone together here. Yes, I'm delighted. It's such a privilege to be alone with you for the first time. An opportunity I often pray for. I thought we might just have a conversation in which you confide in me. And I want nothing better than the chance. 
privilege of bearing what I sold to you and of assuring you that the protests I made against your visitors were nothing personal. They were prompted by my zeal and by impulse to So I assumed I know my welfare was your main concern. Of course it was. Such was my desire. Ow, that hurts. I, it's just over eagerness. I never meant to hurt you. I'd much rather. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, just feeling your dress. Isn't it healthy? Oh, please don't ask her. What? Where could she? It's wonderful thing they do these days. My word, I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. I'm sure. But can we get back to the point? I'm afraid my husband wants to break his promise and give his daughter to you. Is that true? He said something about it, but quite frankly, that's not the happiness I'm pining for. All my desires are concentrated on a different set of wonderful attractions. Oh, you have no time for earthly matters? My heart is not entirely made of stone. I know your aspirations are toward heaven. Then don't hear nothing to distract you, Will. The love we feel for the eternal beauties doesn't preclude the love for what is temporal. Our senses can only really easily become the spell of God's perfect creation. His glory is reflected in your sex. But in your case, it's more than that. He's revealed his rarest wonders and lavished such beauties upon you. We're dazzled. We're carried away. And I can't look at you, you perfect creature, without admiring the Almighty in you. Struck to the heart with blazing love. In front of God's lovely self portrait. How much more I was afraid this secret passion was a cunning subterfuge of the Prince of Darkness. And I am determined to avoid you, thinking you might jeopardize my salvation. But then I realized in such a love there could be no guilt. You could be reconciled with purity. And that's when I surrendered myself to it. I confess, it's very bold of you to dare to offer me my love like this. But I'm relying wholly on your kindness, rather than my own unworthiness. My hopes, my will being my peace of mind are in your hands. My suffering or my bliss depend on you. And only you can make me happy or unhappy, just as you choose. Well, that's a very gallant declaration. If to say, somewhat unexpected. I think you ought to have reflected a little and held back from such a step. A man whose reputation has been saved. Well, I should have saved him as well as human. In front of your heavenly attraction, a man took his way. How can you reflect? It may seem for me to say such things for him, but after all, I'm not an angel. If my declaration seems blameworthy, the real culprit's for enchanting beauty. Ever since I first saw superhuman radiant glory, you've ruled my heart. If you were to show some favor to your unworthy service of tribulation, if you would die and stoop down my love, and out of kindness offer me relief to this prodigy, I guarantee my eternal, unparalleled devotion. Your reputation would be safe with you. You'd run no risk of notoriety. Oh, um, your eloquence is unambiguous enough, I think. But what if my husband were to find out about this proposal? Don't you think it would do damage to his friendship for you? I know you're too generous for that. You will forgive my recklessness for the violence of passion which offends you. You will exonerate us human weakness. And bearing in mind your looks, you will acknowledge that I am not blind and men of flesh and blood. Others might take another line, perhaps, but I am free to exercise discretion. I will say nothing of this to my husband, but in return, I want something from you. I want to support quite openly the later marriage to marry on. And to give up your unfair influence to enrich yourself. No! No, I was in there and I heard everything. As if heaven led me there to crush the hubris of a treacherous enemy and give me the potential for revenge against his insolent hypocrisy, the means to disabuse my father and expose this monster's attempt. No, Dominique, isn't it enough to sort of prove to me whether you admire your friend? I've given my word. Please don't make me break it. It's not in my nature to make trouble. Well, then, let us off foolishness like this. I want to dream of wearing her husband. You have no reasons for that attitude. Not mind mine for disagreeing. I think to let him off would be a joke. His insolence and sanctimoniousness have gotten the better of my justified protests far too often and caused too many upheavals in this house. This liar has led my father by the nose for far too long and done his best to undermine my love as well as believers. Now, heaven has offered an easy way of unmasking the traitor. I have to take this opportunity. It's far too providential to be missed. To have it in my hands and let it go. Would mean I would deserve to lose this chance. No, don't be No, please, you won't persuade me to forgo all the pleasures of revenge. I have what I need to conclude this business. And here's the man who put my mind to rest. Now listen, Father, this may cheer you up. Something's just happened which may startle you. To reward for all your kindness. And that that by that man at the back came. He's just been showing his great love for you, which doesn't even draw the line at making a cockle of you. 
and it's probably going to be a proposition to your wife. You know her gentleness and discretion. She wanted very much to keep this a secret. But I can't indulge his shamelessness. I thought it would be quite wrong not to tell you. It's true. I don't think a woman should ever lose her head to peace of mind for trivial reasons. Honor is not affected. Isn't it enough that we should know how to defend ourselves? That's how I feel. And if I could have light of these wounds on you, you would have kept quiet. My God, can it be possible what they say? Yes, brother. I am evil. I am guilty. A wicked sinner soaked in inequity. The greatest criminal that's ever lived. Each second of my life is stained with filth. It's one huge seething rubbish heap of vice. And heaven surely sees upon his chance to humiliate me as a punishment. I wouldn't have the arrogance to deny with every sin that I'm accused of. So feel your anger. Believe what they say. And throw me out of the street like some delinquent. However, it's a shame you pile upon me. It could be as much as I deserve. You wretch! How dare you fabricate this lie to try to plot his purity of virtue? You mean this hypocritical surrender to make you doubt? Be quiet, you little no, pest! No, let him speak. It's wrong of you to blame me. Why should you favor me in this dispute? Do you trust your show? Do you think I'm going to just because I do so? No, you're letting yourself be tricked by the I'm sorry to say that I'm not at all the man I seem to be. Everyone takes me for a good man, but the simple truth is I'm entirely worthless. Come on, my boy. Speak up. Call me a traitor, a lost soul, a jerk, a thief, a murderer. Crush me with my lineage. I will deny them. I deserve them all. And on my knees I will, in disgrace, in expiation of my life of crime. You go too far! Aren't you ashamed, you wretch? You mean you're taking in Be quiet, you gallows bird! Oh, please, brother, get up. Scum, me. Be quiet. This is too much. I don't know where I'll break your arm. Don't lose your temper. I gotta tell any punishment. Then you see take a scrap on my account. Oh, you upstart. Leave him be. If necessary, I'll ask you to forgive him on my knees. You can't be serious. See how kind he is, you louse. But silence. But I said silence. I know your motives for attacking him. All of you hate him. I've had to watch my wife, my children, and my servants hound him. No method is too crazy when it comes to dragging this good person from my house. But the more ways you try to get rid of him, the better ways I'll find to keep him here. And to annihilate my family's arrogance, I'm going to give him my daughter soon. You're going to force her to accept his hand? Yes, bitch. And despite your despair, Ha! I defy you all. I'm going to teach you that I am in charge and I will be obeyed. So take back what you said this minute. Down on your knees and ask him to forgive you. Who, me? Me ask this unscrupulous fake? So you refuse, you ruffian, and insult him. A stick! Bring me my stick! And you let go. Out of my house. And don't you dare come back! All right. All right, I'm leaving. Get out now! I hereby disappear to you! Dale The only thing you'll get from me is my card! What a way to insult a man of God! Oh, Lord, forgive this man's path of the me. Oh, if only you know what you're doing. people try to blast me in your eyes. Don't! Just to think of the ingratitude is such a cruel torment to my soul. The horror of it. My heart is so heavy, I can't speak. This will be the death of me. You loud! I'm sorry, restrain myself! I should have knocked you senseless there and then! Oh, please, brother, calm down. Don't get so upset. It's time to put an end to these sentences. I know I'm going to cause a trouble here, and I can see no alternative to my opinion. You can't be serious. They hate me here. They're trying to make you doubt my integrity. So? You think I'm going to listen to them? They won't stop attacking, that's for sure. And accusations which you now reject are bound to take their toll eventually. Impossible! Brother, you don't know how I can easily delude your husband. No, never. If I were to leave your forthwith, they'd have no grounds for these attacks. So then, you must stay. My life depends on it. Well, in that case, I'll have to sacrifice myself. What? No, we'll say no more. I know it is necessary. Honor the crowd this land, and our friends will oblige me for preventing this room of suspicion by avoiding your life. I won't be seen here. No, I defy them all. My greatest pleasure is to make them angry. You'll be seen with her constantly. And that's not all. To show them what I think, I'll leave you my soul there and waste no time in handing over all my worldly goods. 
You're my friend, and you'll soon be my son-in-law. Dear to me by far than my own son. My wife or my relations. Oh, won't you please accept my offer? Well, God will be done. Poor boy! Come on and let's go jack the papers and let the jealous not gay on their own spite!
as poor as the drinkers and allowed to cherish. At least I beg you on my knees, be kind, and don't condemn me to the men at home. Don't exercise your power over me and try for me to do something desperate. Come on now, spare yourself no human weakness. I have nothing against your feelings for him. Just play it all you like. Give him all your money, and if that wasn't enough, add mine as well. I'd agree happily, it's yours. And can I take over the line of offering him my body? Let me use it my seven days. I see. You're one of those people who turned religious at the first setback of your amorous plan. On your feet! The more repulsive you find him, the better this marriage will be for you. Use it to mortify your senses. That is all. I don't want any more names. Then stay! What? Don't speak. I utterly forbid it. If you'd allow just one for advice, I guess your advice is always that. Well, I and I thought you were great. But you won't mind it this one time. I am going. I don't know what to say about all this. I'm staggered by your blindness. You must be a bad reader and a sensitive man to overlook what's happened to you today. Seeing is belief. And with all due respect, I know how indulgent you are towards my son, and how afraid you were to contradict him when he tried to play a trick on the poor boy. You seemed a little bit too calm. You would have seemed a tad bit more upset. Me that quite so ferociously when one has declared a love for us? Our blazing eyes and spitting out ourselves to be able to talk to one to it. I give no pleasure as an Alabama. I have no time for rampaging fruits whose virtue ready to be caught, and would scratch your eyes at the first excuse. Time for shrewdness. A chilly and a fierce evil. Excuse me, I know my mind, and I'm not changing it. I get up steady by this curious weakness. I don't know what to say about this. Suppose we could show you you were telling the truth. Show me? Yes. Rubbish. Suppose we found a place somewhere around here where you can hear and see quite clearly. Then what would you have to say about this good man? I'd have to say no. No, I'd have to say nothing because it couldn't happen. This delusion has lasted far too long and I'm tired of being accused of a liar. It's high time I gave myself the satisfaction of showing you that everything we said is the truth. All right. I'll take your word for it. Let's see you keep your promise. Bring him here to me. He's cunning, and he may not be so easy to catch out. No one loves to see the easy. That is, he leaves people to fool themselves. Bring him downstairs. And you two had better go. You go to use this table. You what? It's quite important that you're well hidden. But why under this table? Oh my god! I have a plan. You'll see. Now just stay in there and mind if he doesn't see you. I must say this is all very silly, but I'm interested in seeing you prove your point. I don't believe you'll have any complaints. Now don't be surprised or at all shocked if I sound strange. Remember, I have promised to convince you, and I shall coax since I'm reduced to this. This hypocrite for me taking his mask off. I shall encourage his influence and stimulate his recklessness. Since all of this is for you, this pretense of responding to him with the intention of fooling him, things will go as far as you allow them. It's up to you to interrupt his ardor. Protect your life, and don't make me go through any more than absolutely necessary to convince you. It's your business, and you're tired, then. Here he comes. Stay under there, and mind he doesn't see you. I'm told you haven't seen me in this room. Yes, there's a secret I must tell you. But first, check outside the door and make sure no one's likely to surprise us. We would want to repeat what would happen for anything. Tell me again, you quite a fright. And on your behalf, as you saw, I tried to calm him down and frustrate his intentions. It's true, I was so worried, and I never thought to contradict his story. But for that very reason, things turned out much better and less dangerously. Your reputation soon dispelled the storm, and my husband couldn't think badly of you. And to show us the time for his suspicions, he walked up to spend lots of time together. That's how I can be alone here with you, without the fear of being judged. And that also allows me to reveal something that I probably should have held back a little bit longer. Now, I'm prepared to entertain <laughs> I'm not quite sure I follow you now. Just now you gave a very different answer. Oh, well, if my refusal puts you off, you must know very little about women. You're no good at interpreting what's meant by such an obviously weak defense. On occasions such as these, modesty is bound to be a conflict with our tender feelings. At first, you fight against it. But the way we do so is a sign of our surrender. Our wants for virtue's sake, protecting feebly, is in kind of no! Which promises you everything. Well now, his impulse has a very damning protection, and I've 
pay for your little piece of modesty. So now let me open it last. But I've tried so hard to sell this, darling. I actually, but I'm listening to this long declaration of love. It's something about it has not given me pleasure. And when I myself try to blackmail you, I get this newly arranged wedding. Did my urgency not suggest to you that you are now so special to me? And does this newly arranged wedding make me show love I wanted to myself alone? Dear Sussworth, my such a lovely mom is exquisitely pleasurable to them. Their honey sense unprecedented treatment, flowing in long draft to my entire system. My main concern is before we come to please you, and my greatest blessing will be to fulfill your desires. But forgive me if I take the liberty of casting some small doubt in my good fortune. What you're saying may be a straightforward trick to make me break off this intended marriage. And, to be brutally honest, I can't trust these delicious suggestions you've made until I can taste of what I crave. To reassure me that there's been no mistake and instill in me a lasting confidence into such an as you need to be. Surely that has to move quite so fast to exhaust all the possibilities in one go. To make such an intimate confession of my love has nearly killed me. And now you say that's not enough? That you won't be satisfied until this thing has gone as far as it can go? An undeserving man can never quite rely on hope. In conversation, it's not a firm basis for love. It's also easy to have himself about a glorious future. Once I've enjoyed it, then I'll believe it. You see, I don't think I deserve your kindness. I can't accept my goals to pay it off. I won't believe it. Not until they find some realistic method to convince me. Oh my god! Now you're behaving like a tyrant and plunging me into a strange confusion. Your love has taken passion and control, and your desire so violently demanding. Is there no way out? Won't you give a girl a breathing space? Is it right of you to take advantage so insistently of this weakness and the I have to But why? The group of my man has refused me to defeat his potential! Without further ado. I 
Wimmerman, get out of my house. Now. No. You get out. Because it's my house now. It won't do you the slightest if you throw up these cheap excuses to get rid of me. Attacking me is more dangerous than you think. I am way too punishing impostors. Reventing this insult to God, and maybe people who try to throw me out. Be serious. What? What did you say? I fear that deed of a gift was a mistake. What deed of gift? It's all signed, I'm afraid. But something you said has frightened me more. What? I'll explain later. First, I must see if that attache case is still upstairs. It's far more serious than all the rest. Is what's in this attache case a secret? Argus, that friend of mine, sought me out before he fled abroad. From what he said, I gather it contains essential private and financial papers. And why did he hand it over to Tartu? He's my conscience. I went straight to him, that traitor, and confided in him. He persuaded me to give him the case. On the grounds that if anybody asked, I could deny I had. And still keep my mind clear of any perjury. Oh, I'd say things look black to To be frank, this indiscretion, dear, gift, was undertaken by much delay. You put yourself upon him. He who does have such great power in you, provoking him is desperately unwise. You should have tried harder to placate him. You're right. Who could have thought that traitor could hide such double dealing wickedness? Well, that's the last religious man I'll ever trust. In the future, I'll recoil from them in horror. And never miss a chance to be their scourge. Oh, well, not another one of your tantrums, please. You don't know what a happy meeting is. You really never coincide with reason. You realize the mistake that you're due by false flying. What the flying trying to make up for? By trying to do an even greater trap. You're not seeing the difference between men of honor and this contemptible degenerate. This is because of one of these with this many of hypocritical austerity, brazenly cheated you, then, assuming all men are like that, and genuinely religious people don't exist today. These sons of thought they have aged. Learn to stick with virtue and assemble. Don't be too careless with your admiration. You show necessary moderation. If possible, don't fault the hypocrite, but equally, don't attack your devotion. And if you can't help going to the scene, better make the same mistake again. It's the truth this wretch has threatened you, Father, forgetting all your kindness for him, and that with vile and period of pride. He's turned your generosity against you. Yes, my son, I've never suffered so much. Leave it to me. I'll cut his ears off. There's no point holding back against that kind of shamelessness. I'll get you out of this. There's only one answer. I'll beat his head and voice up you. Now you please calm down. You're living in an age, in a kingdom, where violence is never the solution. What's going on here? What are all these things? Unprecedented things which I have lived. The rewards of my generosity. I take a poor man in most villages. Put him up and treat him like my brother. I give him my money and my daughter. And all the while this criminal nurtures a black box to seduce my life. I'm not even content with that. He dares attack me with the gift that my foolish kindness has armed him with, him with. To bring me down to what he was. A beggar. Poor boy. My dear, I simply can't believe that you think something so wicked. What did you say? People are always jealous of a little bit. Man. What can you mean? This is a great trouble of this love and how much you hate it. Hated? Hey, what's that got to do with what I've just been saying? When you were a little boy, I told you 50 times, in this world, virtue always persecutes. The envious may die, but envy never. What's that got to do with what's just happened? I expect they made up all sorts of stories. I already explained. I saw. There's nothing so ingenious as God. I'll swing for you yet, Mother. I saw him do these wicked things myself. There's always going to spread my eyes to come. No one on earth could get away from that. This conversation is ridiculous. I saw him. What I just did was describe the scene. How many more times must I repeat myself? Must I show myself worse? Apparently, you seem awful and thought you must always go by what you see. I'm going mad. Suspicion is human nature, and you trust often mistaken for evil. 
I suppose the urge to kiss my wife has some religious motive. Mr. Pollock, you didn't have to survive. You should have waited till they really Should have waited till they in front of me? No, no, you make me say things I'll regret. No, no, you can't hear. He's so in love with Bertie. I simply can't bring myself to believe in the wicked things that you choose to love. You're making me so angry. I don't know what I'd say if you were my own mother. That's how it goes, sir. And it serves you right. You wouldn't listen, and neither will she. You're wasting time with this, uh, with this utter nonsense. You shouldn't even be dropped some plan. You can't afford to dream. He's a real threat. Do you really think he'd dare to see them through? He wouldn't have the things to drink for tea. Well, I wouldn't bank on it. You'll find out ways to justify his handiwork against you. And I've seen people caught in labyrinth and much related to it, on much less evidence. And as I said, knowing his power, you shouldn't have provoked him. You're right. But how can I control my dear idiot arrogance? I wish there was some way I was building a negotiated settlement. If I would have known him so well under distance, I would have never given your president any mission. Go see what that man wants. A visitor now is all I need.
God bless you all. May he be happy with the man who sent you. Well, Mother, am I right? Look at this rip. Just let him go, poor rat. The 
unhappy face. They don't act as a yoke, must be crippling him. This hope is very great to be true glad to the past of virtue. Turn against the evil and repent, and cause our great need to temper his judgment. Meanwhile, you must go on your knees to him and show him how great we are for lenient. Yes, well said. Let us go and kiss his feet and thank him for his kindness. And with that duty acquitted, we must meet another necessary obligation. The rewards for a sweet and generous love. By celebrating your wedding, believe.